Good morning, DMC family. Welcome to our worship service this morning. I hope that you're all well wherever you are watching this service from. Friends, let us begin the service by lighting the peace candle. Oops. Let us pray. We light this candle, Almighty God, as a symbol and as a reminder that you, O oh God, are the light of the world. And with you in our lives, there cannot be darkness. And so we pray, O oh God, that this light may symbolize in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives the ever present light and flame of Christ who defeats darkness wherever it comes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, let us hear our invitation to worship together this morning. Our call to worship is found from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is good, is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Indeed, his faithfulness continues through all generations. And so, friends, we now come to a time of prayers. Come, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We acknowledge, oh God, that you are our Lord, you are our Savior. We come, oh God, blessed with new life, blessed with the opportunity to hear and feel and touch this morning. We are thankful, O oh God, that you have given us a new opportunity, another day, to aspire towards our dreams, to live for our families, to serve and work for our homes. And so we pray this morning, O oh God, that as you has, have blessed us with another day, that you will be with us throughout this day, O oh God, that in everything that we do and say, your face, your words may be shown to those who have not yet known you, who have not yet experienced you. May through our lives as testimonies bring those, O oh God, who, who are yearning to know you. May our lives become that which draws them to you so that they know, O oh God, that you're a God for all and not for only us. And so be with us in the service, O oh God, as we worship you, as we praise you, as we acknowledge you and you alone as our God. In your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we, we acknowledge that we are sinful. We acknowledge that we failed to live in a way that you want us to live. We, O oh God, have not done the things that you were supposed to do, and yet we have done the things that we were meant not to do. And so, God, we know that in your eyes at times we, we, have, we, are, we do things that are very sinful, and we are sinners. And so we bring our sinful hearts, thoughts, and mind to you this morning. Because you, we know, O oh God, that you're a God that forgives. And so we take this moment to confess our sins to you in a moment of silence.
And so, God, we, we are motivated. We are thankful. We are blessed to know, O oh God, that you say if we come to you and we acknowledge our faults and our sins, you are a God that forgives. And so thank you, O oh God, for forgiving us for the sins we have done intentionally and unintentionally. In your mercy, hear our prayers. Almighty God, we pray this morning for the BMC family, for the BMC church. We pray, O oh God, that you will come into our confused heartbroken, shattered, somewhat disbelief, grieving hearts at this time of transition. We pray, O oh God, that you will, you will come and heal all of us, that you will once again show us your hand of mercy, your hand of healing. Mold us, O oh God, and shape us towards being what you want us to be. We pray, O oh God, that whoever is hurt this morning, whoever is, is heartbroken, whoever is confused and don't know what is going on in their lives and in the life of this church, we pray that you, O oh God, who is the light, you will come and show us the way. You will come and show us our purpose. You will come and show us what is right and what is wrong. Be with us, O oh God. May this time be not a time where we break up and, and go our separate ways, but may we, through your name, O oh God, come together and, 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 and heal one another and help one another. And so be our comforter, be our union, O oh God. We pray not only for this church, but we pray for the church universal. That, O oh God, who call upon your name this morning, that they may see your hand, they may see your love, they may experience your mercy. We pray that, O oh God, that all of us who come and stand before your children, that we will do this with honesty, that we will do this with, with humbleness, knowing that we are, not, we, are not, we are merely just vessels of your word. We are merely servants of the kingdom of God. And this is not about us, but it is about you. And so come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and transform us. And we pray, O oh God, that those whom you have called to be pastors, to be shepherds, to be ministers, that in the hurt and in the pain that sometimes they experience in this journey of serving you, they may know, O oh God, that it is nothing compared to the love that they will receive from you. And so strengthen us, strengthen them. Give, us the, give them the zeal and the power and the strength to continue serving you in and out of season. We pray this, O oh God, knowing that you already are working in all of us, in the pastors as well in the congregation. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lastly, O oh God, we pray for those who need you the most this morning. We pray for those who are sick. We pray, O oh God, for those who are laying or lying in hospital beds or who are lying in their home, whom doctors have sent back from hospital beds, saying that they have nothing else to offer or to do. We pray, O oh God, for families who are grieving this morning, who have lost their loved ones. We pray that you will come 
and heal them. That you will come through your spirit, join them as one, so that they may feel your comfort, they may feel your love, and they may feel your presence. We pray, O oh God, for those who are in hospital, who are in jail cells, those who are sleeping under bridges, those who have no home, no food to eat. That, O oh God, that this morning you will call upon your good Samaritan that they will come and feed the poor and clothe the poor. That you will move in us the spirit of service so that we know that it is not only just about us, but it is about our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And so be with us, O oh God, this morning. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Friends, our scripture reading this morning is found from the Gospel according to St. Luke. We will read from verses, chapter 8 rather, verses 9 until 14. The Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 18, we will read from verses 9 until verse 14. The heading says, The Parable of the Pharisee and the Text Collector. To some who were confident of their own righteousness looked down on everyone else. Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to the heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Friend, th- friends, this is the word of God, and thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray this morning that you will enter into our minds and our thoughts this morning as you speak to us. May your words, O oh God, heal us, transform us, and convict us to doing what is right. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Friends, my theme for this morning is be humble. In the story that we read, we we hear that Jesus tells um, a parable, a parable of a Pharisee and a tax collector. He Luke begins to contrast two people in this story or in this parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. On the one hand, you have this Pharisee who is a religious man, who who is known as a a low keeper, who is a learner or learned student of the law of God. And on the other hand, you have the tax collector. In the time um, of Jesus, we know that tax collectors were people who were not liked. Because tax collectors would at times cheat people of their money. And so here are these two people on the spectrum. One is is seen by the, the time and the people of that time as a good man. And on the other hand, this one person is then seen by the world and the people of that time as an evil and a bad man. And so Jesus then tells a story that the Pharisee and the tax collector, on their day and time of prayer, they both go to the temple. And they stand in different corners of the temple. And so the Pharisee then begins to pray. And now the Pharisee trusting in his righteousness, believing that there is no other person 
in that temple who is worthy of the ear of God than him. He begins to boast. He begins to be to, to see himself as, as more righteous than other people. And so allow me to then put this first point through this morning. And that do not boast in your righteousness. Friends, when we are people of faith and believe, we do not do this because we want to score points from other people or because we believe that doing right um, in, in the eyes of God gives us leverage to condemn and to judge other people. We do this because being righteous allows us a space and a time where we connect with God. Being righteous is what we are supposed to do as people created by God. And so being, being righteous does not mean that you are better than other people. But being righteous is about you listening to the will of God. It is you doing what God has called you to do. And so for a moment, never, never boast about your righteousness. Because if, if, if we were be, to be honest, none of us could ever, ever be seen as right or righteous in the eyes of God. We are all sinners. We all fall short of the will of God. Some, some of us have a way of pretending. Some of us have found a good way of pretending. We, 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 we begin a cycle of coming to church and worshiping and being part of different ministries. And yet, it deep inside of us, we are far from God. We are far from, from truly having faith and believing in God. We have, we have become doing all of these things because we believe it is the right thing to do. And so this Pharisee believed that just because he was, he was somebody who studied the law, who followed the law of God, made him more righteous than the tax collector. And yet we forgot that we are all sinners. We all fall short of the will of God. And I want to say to you, BMC family, this morning, if you are like that Pharisee who believes that you are better than the person seated next to you, then I want to come and tell you this morning, the kingdom of God is for those who are humble and not those who boast in their righteousness. Friends, it does, it does nothing for you to, be, to boast in your righteousness. Because your righteousness does not determine your entry into the kingdom of God. But what determines your entry into the kingdom of God is, is a humble heart, is a humble spirit, is a spirit that understands that you fall short of the will of God, you fall short of what God commands and asks you to do because, because you're a sinner. And so nobody can ever stand in front of God and say they are perfect. Friends, we do not believe in a, a religion of, of perfection. But rather, it's like the Methodist doctrine, we, we strive for perfection. We strive to be like Christ. Every day when we wake up, every day when we do and go about our daily duties, what should occupy our minds is what would Jesus do? What would Christ do? And so one thing that we must know that God did not go, or Jesus did not go around boasting about his perfection. Jesus did not go around boasting about his righteousness. But Jesus would pray for those who are weak. Jesus would pray for those who are lost. 
Jesus would pray for those who need God. And that is what we are supposed to do. Not to beat our chest because we believe that we are more righteous than others. We are more righteous than our brothers and sisters in Christ. The second thing that I want us to look at as, is that we are all sinners. Friends, whether you're a Pharisee or a tax collector, whether you're a preacher or a congregant, whether you're a bishop or a reverend, whether you are anyone of status or someone with no status of all at all, we are all sinners. We all fall short. And so we, we should never ever think that our sins are more better than other people's sins. You know, one thing I have learned throughout my journey is that we have Christians who, who believe and, and put forward uh, 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 the Ten Commandments or who put forward sins on a hierarchy. And they, they think if, 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 if only I do this sin, then I am good with God. It's better than the other sin. And yet we forget that God does not put any hierarchy when it comes to sin. All sin is bad, regardless of what sin you, you have done. Whether you are speaking ill of your neighbor or you're a murderer, all sins are bad. And so you could never boast and think that just because you're, you're not a murderer, but you only are a gossiper, that you are better than the murderer. The Bible says that all of these are sins. And so there are no hierarchy of sin. And so we want to say to you this morning that we need to humble ourselves to God because we know that all of us seated here and watching this service, that we are sinners. That in the eyes of God, we have done wrong. And so what we are supposed to do is when we get an opportunity to come before God in prayer, what we are supposed to do, it is not to boast, but rather to seek forgiveness, to humble ourselves to God, to say to God, I, I know my shortfalls, I know my wrongdoing, and I come to you, O oh God, because you're the one who forgives sins, and we, I come to you begging and asking for you to forgive me. Friends, there is nothing that, that is too big nor too small for God. All of us seated here and watching the service need to go to God in prayer. God forgives everything. God forgives every sin that we have committed. There is no sin that God does not forgive. And so you might be seated there and say, but TK, I, I have done the most horrific things in my life. How, how is it possible that God can forgive me? I, I have been, I have hurt so many people in my life. I, I, have, I have done some evil deeds in my life. In fact, if it was for me, I would not even forgive myself because at people, at times, we condemn ourselves before even other people condemn us. We, we live under a shadow of, 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 of shame because we have condemned ourselves. We, we believe that we are not deserving of love, we are not deserving of forgiveness because we have condemned ourselves. And I want you to know this morning that if you come, and not, rather, not if, when you come to God in prayer, when you come to God to, to confess your sin, to acknowledge your shortfalls, God will answer you. God will forgive you. That is why John Wesley speaks about the four alls. All can be saved. All needs to be saved. All needs to be saved to the uttermost, and all can be saved. 
Because we, we, we believe that we, we are people or, or we are, we are a, 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 a congregation that, that, that needs the saving grace of God. We believe that all of us seated here deserve and need and should ask for the mercy and, and salvation of Christ. And so, and so we are all sinners. We are all sinners. We are all, we are all people who fall short of the love of God. We all fall short of doing what is right in the eyes of God. And so this man, this tax collector, realized and acknowledged that. He realized when this man, who was, for, uh, was a Pharisee, was boasting about his righteousness, this tax collector realized and acknowledged that he was a sinner needing of the mercy and the saving grace and the forgiveness of God. And so friends, humble yourself. Do not believe, do not believe that you are perfect or you're more righteous than other people. We are all sinners. We all do bad things. And lastly, as part of being humble, we must come to Christ for forgiveness. My BMC family, I want to tell you this. If you never see me preaching in this online service again, may, may I leave you with these words. God is a forgiving God. God is a righteous God. God is a loving God. Despite your past, despite what you have done, God is waiting to forgive you. The Bible speaks about the parable of, 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 of the child who, who received the prodigal son, who received the wealth of his father, and he went out into the world to go squander the wealth that, that God, his father had given him. The Bible says he, he ended up having nothing. He ended up sleeping with pigs and eating with pigs. And what is nice about this parable is on the other hand, the Bible says the father would go every day to go and look and see if his son has not yet come back. Day in and day out, he would go to the gate looking left and right to see if there is no sign of his son. And the Bible says when this young man was tired of eating with pigs, he remembered home and he went home. And the Bible says that when this father saw his son coming, he ran to his son and he embraced him. And the son said, I, I, I ask for forgiveness for I have, I, have, I, have, I have forsaken you and I have forsaken God and I have done wrong. And, and this father did not mind, did not care. All that he did was to embrace the son. And the Bible says he gave, took him inside of the house and he gave him new shoes and he gave him new clothes and he gave him his ring as a sign that he was a son. And so despite what we may do, in spite what we have done, God is like that father who goes to the gate to go look if there is any sign of us coming so that he can give us a huge embrace so that when we forgive, for, uh, when we uh, uh, confess our sins, he is one who says, my son, my daughter, Thank you for coming back home. Your sins are forgiven and your life changes because our God is a God of forgiveness. Our God is a God who embraces all, who takes care of all. And so humble yourself to Christ. Ask Christ for forgiveness. 
God loves you. God cares for you. Do not condemn yourself. Do not believe that you're not, wor not worthy of, of, of God's forgiveness. We are all worthy. We are all deserving of God's forgiveness. Because it is in the nature of God to forgive. And so I want to encourage you there. If you are tired of your sinful life, if you have realized that there is no, there is no future in your sinful life, I come to present to you an alternative, a God who forgives, a God who is waiting to embrace you, a God who is waiting to love you. All that you are to do it is to humble yourself before God. And the Bible says, lastly, when, when this man who is a Pharisee finished pre, uh, praying, when he thought that his life in the kingdom of God was guaranteed, the Bible says he did not receive or inherit the kingdom of God. But this man who humbled himself and asked for forgiveness from God, he, inherit, he inherited the kingdom of God. And so in what, or if, we, if we want to be with God, if we want to be in heaven with our creator, with our God, we must be willing to humble ourselves to him. We must be willing to, to humble ourselves, to, to seek forgiveness, to, to, to acknowledge our shortfalls and to repent and to move towards Christ, who is the one who forgives, who is the one who gives us salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Almighty God, thank you for your words this morning. Thank you for the reminder of God that if all of us, if we want to access the kingdom of God, we must be humble. And so thank you, O oh God, for your lesson this morning. That we are all sinners. That we all fall short of your love. We fall short of your forgiveness. But because it's in your nature always to love and forgive before even we seek and ask for forgiveness, you have already given us. And so be with each and every one of us, O oh God, who are watching this service. Be with them. Be with those, O oh God, who, who are seeking your forgiveness this morning, who have moved away from the sinful past and who have repented and are seeking a new life in you. We pray this morning, O oh God, that they will feel your love and your touch as they begin a new journey, a journey of righteousness, but not a journey of boasting in their righteousness, but acknowledging that they are merely servants, they are hands and feet of Christ. And so be with us this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, we have come to the end of our service this morning. May we stand as we pronounce the benediction together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace.